Jefferson High School. Uh, this listening session is being held. This is one of, like I say, nine listening sessions that we've had. We're having them at every high school. Uh, each trustee is responsible for going to the high schools that they represent and having these listening sessions where we're coming out to share with you uh, what we have done up to now, the process that has taken place with the superintendent search, and then the calendar of where we're going to be going from moving forward. And then really the most important part of this meeting is we want to hear from all of you. We want to hear what your thoughts are going to be with respect to who the next superintendent needs to be. So uh, I know we have people that are still coming in. Uh, la primera pregunta es, ¿tenemos alguien aquí que necesita interpretación uh, uh, en español? Or we can do it all in English, because we do have an interpreter here. <coughs> okay, so we will do this in English, and let's go ahead and get started. And so, again, this is a listening session. The topic tonight is going to be the superintendent, uh, superintendent search. That's what the trustees are coming out to talk to, talk to you all about, okay? And so, as I said, this is one of uh, eight or nine, one of each of uh, every high school, uh, and where we're coming out to our communities to go ahead and listen to you all and hear what your thoughts are with respect to who we need to be looking at, uh, at the, for the superintendent. So we'll go to the next one. Next slide. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is to give you a little rundown of where we have been. So going back before March 30th, we're all aware that we, um, we separated the previous uh, superintendent and so that's what caused the need for us to have to be here today. What's not going to be on this board right now is one of the things that the previous board of trustees, those before that were in uh, place before May, several of whom we knew were going not to run again. And then we also knew that there were a couple of contested races, so it was determined early on that it would be the new board after May that was going to be responsible for making the selection. I think that's very important because we know that we, we were looking, I'm going to forget the exact date, that uh, uh, we actually were without a superintendent and went to an interim to superintendent, uh, but time has passed uh, from that. But that's the explanation for that, okay? So the only thing that the previous board did was select the search room. And so that process then began on March 30th, and, and we did. We, we met, um, an, an RFP or FQ was sent out, and we considered the different applicants for the search firm, and we selected the search firm. Uh, back then, it was going to be TASB that was selected to do the initial search for us. Um, TASB at that time, while well, they were in play, after May 17th, well between May 17th and June 7th, what they did is they did 26 virtual community meetings and they did an online surveys to reach out to internal stakeholders, i.e. Uh, teachers, staff, people within the district. And then we also, through survey, we reached out to the community to ask the community and ask them pretty much what we're here to talk about now, what your thoughts are with respect to who the next superintendent, the traits, the skills that we need to be looking at in that search. In August 17th, the TASB search firm declared a conflict to us, or prior to us. And that conflict was such that we needed to meet as a board and have a conversation about that conflict. And the board unanimously determined that the conflict that was presented at the time uh, was one that we could not stay with TASB. And so we unanimously approved that we were going to cancel the contract with TASB and we were going to seek another contract with another firm. The good news is that that happened rather quickly. Uh, there was not much delay, as you can see, September 3rd or September 2nd, the board met and we agreed to hire Walsh uh, Gallegos, which is a, a Texas uh, a law firm who does superintendent searches in the state of Texas. And then they are connected with Dr. Ann Dixon, who specializes in 
helping to find superintendents for school districts in Texas. So we contracted with them on August 17th, and then September 2nd, we had our first meeting with the search firm where we sat down, and at that meeting, that's where they shared with us the process for moving forward with the search firm. They did make it very clear, though, that really it is the trustees that are going to drive this process. They're going to manage it, but we are going to be the ones who drive the process. So the trustees are all in complete control of the selection of the next superintendent. And one thing that was a concern for board members at that time was we wanted to make sure that when we were doing this search, utilizing the search firm, that they didn't just have an already prepared list of, of applicants and they were going to just send them the same list that, that applied in another district here. They needed to recruit this, they needed to send it out, they needed to get people who are interested in coming to El Paso, Texas in order to be the, the superintendent of El Paso's largest district. So once the planning session was held, and I, I'm sorry, that was September 15th, the next day, the position was posted. And it was posted through Texas, I, Texas ISD and Tassinet, which are the two of the largest firms or, or entities that put these types of notices out. Uh, people all over the country will look at these um, announcements, so we feel comfortable that the announcement was out far-reaching and broad. And I'll speak for myself, I think it's important that we get applicants from all over because when we start comparing one to the other we want to feel comfortable that we were truly able to select the best applicant amongst a pool of applicants that aren't just a limited pool okay and so um, at this point you know obviously we're not even we haven't even taken a look at the applications that have come in uh, that happens next week but i just feel it's important that we get applications from all over, from all over so that we can be comfortable at the end of the day when we make that selection. We, we feel good that we made the right selection because this person that we select could be competitive anywhere in the United States. Okay. All right, and then on uh, September 24th and 26th, uh, Walsh Gallegos uh, did go to the Tasa Tasby conference and they set up a booth there where they were talking about uh, this position and accepting applications um, TASA, that conference was over 6,000 attendants, uh, and since it's a, it's a TASA TASB combined conference, uh, TASB being really focused on school board officials and TASA being focused on, on school administrators. Okay? So there was a large uh, potential pool of people for us to reach out to, and Walsh Gallegos had the opportunity to speak one on one with each and, and any person that had interest in the application for UPISD. So that was a nice added benefit that doesn't usually happen, but since we had that conference uh, in the middle of the time that we're doing the search firm, uh, that was a nice benefit to have because we could be out there. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide. So this slide is going to talk about the surveys that were conducted by TASB. Um, now one thing that's very important because of the conflict, and TASB understood um, the need for us to cancel their contract. So the good news is all the work that they had done prior to the, 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 the contract being canceled, they still gave it to us. So we didn't have to redo surveys. We didn't have to redo the meetings that had. We had them, they gave us all the data for that, and we, helped, we have it in our possession to be able to, to use that information when it comes down to uh, making our selection. And so the first thing is, is with the surveys, they did survey over a thousand people. Of those thousand, uh, 537 of these surveys were responses from our community that's outside of the schools. So that's our parents, that's the people that have an interest in EPISD but don't necessarily work for that. Uh, the other surveys were going to be school related stakeholders, people within. Uh, the district, okay? And then I'm not going to read them all out, but you can see as far as the different sessions that were held, these are online sessions. Uh, these are the sessions that were held by TASB, 
And you can see, uh, for example, the elementary teachers, there were 12 sessions that, were, that they had. Um, the Student Advisory Council was one session. Principals, there were three separate sessions, and, and we go down that way. Okay, so a total of 26 sessions were held. Again, all of them with the intent of gathering information from, in this case, our stakeholders, uh, the people who work for the district, and helping us identify the right person who's going to be the next superintendent. We go to the next slide. Okay, so then this is going to be the calendar. This is what you can expect uh, when we, as we move forward, and when we're going to get, or when we're going to be able to name our next superintendent. Okay? So the process, as I stated, uh, under Los Gallegos, that began with the planning session on September 15th. And then we, we made the announcement on September 16th, put it out, and we were accepting applications at that point. Between September 24th and 25th, we were, the Walsh Gallegos was up at uh, Tasa Tasby, uh, also recruiting uh, from uh, people who attended that conference. Um, October 18th and 19th, that's where we are right now. These are the trustee community listening sessions, where this is our first opportunity as trustees to come out to speak with you and to listen to you. Because everything up to this point has been taken care of by the search firm. Okay? So this is our first time here. Then we go to October 28th, which is today. Today the application is closed. So I think it's a 5 o'clock central time, so I think it's closed as of now. And so the applications that we have, that's what we're going to be using in order to make our next selection. Next Tuesday, the board is going to meet and we're going to review those applications. And it is at that point, and, and this is going to be a, a pretty much all day meeting, where each one of us will by ourselves go through all of the applications and we'll decide who do we carry over to the next step, which is the interviews. Okay? And then you know the process is going to call for each of us to come up with our own listing. We'll pull them together, and then we'll probably have some negotiation um, to identify who those uh, the, the top people, the top candidates, are going to be that will go to interview. Okay? And then those interviews are going to happen. Uh, we'll interview candidates and select the applicants for second interviews uh, on November 8th through the 10th. And so that's where we will actually be talking to those candidates who have been identified as those to be interviewed. And I'm thinking what we're going to try to do, although I can't confirm, is we're going down to five and under at that point. Okay? November 15th and 16th, we will have second interviews. Okay? And from that second interview, that's where we're going to name the finalists. Now, very important, it is at that point, November 15th and 16th, and then whether we name one finalist, two finalists, I don't have uh, exactly how that's going to be. That's when we, the district, can actually release the names of the people who will be interested in this position. The, the final candidates will be hired. Up until this point, the process is completely confidential. And the reason for that is real simple. There are many, many people who are going to be applying for this position who could be superintendents in other locations, assistant superintendents, high-ranking administrators, and they're applying. And they don't want their employers to know right now that they are looking for another job here in Alaska, Texas. So we have to protect the confidentiality of, of those people who are applying for the process. If we don't, what winds up happening is we don't get applicants. Okay? So at that point, that's when we will, sometime between that period, we will be able to make an announcement. And then on Monday, December 6th, okay, or 7th, some busy Monday or Tuesday, December 6th or 7th, we will vote and we will announce who the final applicant, final person who will become or we hope we'll accept the position of superintendent for the next. Okay? The trick one which everybody asks, when will they start? And that's, as you can see, it's a TBD to be determined. And the reason for that is because depending on who it is that gets selected, 
they may be under contract with the district if they're currently at. And if they're under contract at, the, at their district, then it really is dependent upon their district releasing them from that contract to allow them to come to this new job. Hopefully, um, the district will allow it and we'll get them right away. Hope, uh, the hope is that they start in January with the second part of the, of the school semester. But if not, it could be as late as May and June when their contracts expire um, at their current districts and then they'll come in and start the next school year uh, for PPISD. If that's the case, we'll continue um, operating the way we are right now with Vince as interim superintendent until the day we do have a named superintendent who comes in to take place. So any question regarding anything that I have just discussed regarding this process? The, the sessions that you conducted with uh, the teacher unions, the parents, uh, student councils, when, when did that occur? Well, on those dates, those sessions were um, that, uh, you can see the elementary teachers, May 17th, 21, uh, 21 and 24. Uh, those are the days that that was conducted. That was conducted by Kathy. We board members were not involved in that process. How was that disseminated to the community? It's a good question. I don't have an answer for you other than it was, I have to believe it was announced through the district, but I don't know. I mean, at the end, I do know that these are the sessions that we had. <laughs> good question. I will follow up. Okay, because if we don't, if you don't know that, if you're telling us you didn't get notified, then absolutely we want to know. Uh, if so you got notified. If that step was, was uh, missed, what's, what's the outcome? It's a good question. I'll have to find that, that out because um, what we have right now is a calendar and uh, we'll have to talk. Do we have to go back and do the do service? Uh, that's a good question to ask. That would definitely be likely a board action that we would have to take coming out of closed session this meeting that would come out. Yeah. Yes. You said the community was involved in this survey? Mm -hmm. There's nothing pointed up there that says uh, members of the community. On the left hand side, this is with the information, the data that I have. And so there were 1,021 people who responded to the online survey. That online survey, I do know, was available through ETSD, the website. Okay? I, I, again, how notifications went out, I don't have an answer for you for that because I, that's a process that we weren't involved in but certainly one that I can look into. Um, but we did get uh, 1,021 responses uh, from a survey instrument, and then 537 of those were community members. Is this, I'm sorry, take off your mind. That does not even half of the population, that's not even half of the population for the El Paso District uh, community. Mm -hmm. So how is it that it's, more or less uh, a good response that that many people, I mean, that is not even yeah. enough. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you that's, that's a good question. I'm going to say that that number of respondents to me is kind of what I, I was thinking we're going to see. I mean, as we can see just from these meetings that we're having, you're not seeing a lot of community come out, right? Um, I think that's to be reasonable, what we're trying to do is get a sample. Okay, anytime you do a survey, we know we're not going to get everybody, right? So what we want to do is have a sample of people from the different segments of our community, right? That will then give us information that that kind of it'll trend, right? The information will trend, and we'll, the and I can tell you, I've already seen the comments, and so those comments are already trending. We know what the most common comments are, okay, and so. Um, it gives us a trend. So is this a valid sampling? I can ask the question. Um, I have not been told by a current um, a search firm that it's not. I don't know that anybody has asked. But I would think that if they were thinking it wasn't good data, they would have told us at the planning session from the beginning that we need to get more voices. Yes, sir? So based on that good question that you've been asking me, and say that step was missed, and you guys go into session. Uh, cool. Okay, and and if we're going to go back to surveys, well, obviously we're going to have to announce that. And if we're going back to surveys and we're saying it's because we didn't have enough, 
it's because the previous search firm didn't do the best in getting that information out, okay? But there's a lot of presumptions there, and, and so without being able to sit down and have a conference, that conversation, pull out all of the information that now Wall Street Gallegos has in the possession from the transition of data, uh, because up to now we haven't asked those questions. And so we'll just have to come up and, and make a determination. Um, you go here. systems that we have for that we reach out to parents, that we reach out to everybody, that it's done through that process. Uh, there was local media coverage on it, there was newspaper coverage on it, there was um, a lot of, uh, of social media coverage on it. So um, what, is, what is sufficient, I don't know. What is sufficient, I don't know. I saw, I did see a lot of it as far as the social media side of it. Okay, I, I'm not a parent, so I'm not connected to the parent boards, right? Um, so I can't answer that one. But, you know, again, we can, we can answer that question, um, and we will have a conversation over it, okay? Um, that we will, we'll take it back, that this is a concern from this meeting, that the concern is, are these, these are the um, At this point, from the only thing that we really have to go on, and why nobody really did question it, in my opinion, is because the numbers that we're seeing, especially in that left column, are kind of what we expect. Okay, it's what I expected Sean to say. And I don't think anybody else did it. And then our current, um, our current people didn't say, hey, in fact, I think they told us if I recall that that was good numbers. And so, with that said, my Having response. the correct sample number does not mean that the data is valid. So I would, again, encourage well, you I, to Well, I don't, yeah, I mean, I, I, we, I've seen the data and how it's been tabulated. I'm comfortable with the data that has been collected. The question is, is the amount of data that has been collected that is coming from here. I am comfortable with the data. The questions that we asked that were out there, I think, were the appropriate questions. And it elicited the responses that we wanted to hear as to who, basically what we want to know from our communities, what your thoughts are. And we can go to the next, the, the next slide, and I'll put the question up there. And uh, it's, it's just a very 